So I'll be presenting on this paper called RefGenie, a Reference Genome Resource Manager. Um, and it's a paper by Stolercheck and colleagues. Um, we can just get right into it. Um, so it's a piece of software, but before I guess, before I talk about really what it does, um, I'll get into like the motivation that they give for why they developed the software. Um, and so obviously um, within our group, at least we know that like we do a lot of analysis um, using reference genomes and also like a lot of reference based files. So like an example of that would be, um, so for the high set aligner, um, it requires what they call a high, like an index based on the FOSTA file for whatever genome you're using. Um, and numerous tools require similar things. Um, in the paper, they refer to that kind of thing as derived assets. Um, but anyway, this is like a common problem for us and then also for other researchers. Um, and then we also do these things in collaboration with um, other research groups where we might need, um, if we're collaborating with people at different locations, then we it's obviously important to make sure that the reference files that we use are consistent. Um, and so um, one of the things addressed by the software, um, they call it centralization. So um, on like a local machine, this would involve having reference files in like a standard location, make sure that things aren't duplicated and to reduce confusion. So like you always know where reference files are um, having a single location to do, to do that. Um, then they also talk about like flexibility. So um, I'll go into this in more detail later, but they talk about how like similar reference management tools um, often sort of overlook the situation where if a resource is missing, like how, how that's managed. So like an example of that is like for maybe a less common genome, um, tools that have like a server where you pull files from, um, inevitably there's gonna be some files that they don't have. And um, in situations where you need a file that they don't have, um, a lot of other tools, at least they make the case for this, a lot of other tools don't really address that. And so the user is like inevitably left to sort of manually manage things, which ultimately defeats the purpose of having a reference management system. Um, and then um, to the way that they address this with the, the tool RefGenie is um, like, it's the simple command line interface. So you have commands like this example, um, RefGenie pull um, the HG38 primary FOSTA. So um, with a similar uh, notation, I guess, you can access a pretty large number of reference files. Um, a pretty simple command. Um, another thing that this achieves is like being able to organize things um, locally with like simple, again, with simple commands, but um, and pretty much arbitrarily many reference files. Um, so like the command ref genie lists gives you like which files you have already downloaded or built because um, there's also an option to like build custom genomes locally they cover um, and then like the simple command if you want to know like what the path is to a, a given asset um, you can use the command ref genie seek and it returns the path of wherever it um, was installed or i guess pulled or built um, and then to address like the situation for like assets that aren't present on the on the server so i mentioned that like a lot of tools have like a server that you, with a lot of um, common files that you pull from. Um, in this example, actually, so I, I tried this out a little bit myself and um, for like the HD38 primary build, um, there's like a FOSTA file. There's a, there's a bunch of files, but the high site index is not one of them. And so um, if that's ever the case, you can use the command like refgenie build and then taking in this case, it takes the FASTA file and then it builds the high set to index. Um, and just like a note on uh, how that works, they sort of assume that you have these, all the tools necessary installed already. So like 
if you're building a high set two index, then they assume that you have high set two on the path and like functioning. That's kind of left up to the user. Although I believe that they mentioned that they have a Docker. Um, I'd have to look more into that, but I believe they mentioned they have a Docker container um, with like the required software software like inside that container. But um, anyways, that's a little bit, um, I guess that's a topic for later. Um, so on the slide, <laughs> this slide's empty because I, I think that they have a figure that sort of addresses this um, best. So they compare Graph Genie with um, other similar tools. So they have this figure here, um, maybe a bit kind of hard to read, but um, well, at least the way they, they depict it here, they make it seem that like Graph Genie is objectively better than <laughs> all of the other similar tools. But um, if we look at the actual column, the columns here, I guess, um, I think this other tool, like from Gal, I think the company Galaxy, uh, it's called Data Managers. It has some of the same things that we would find important, like um, being able to download assets from a server, um, being able to access them individually, and then support for custom genomes, um, stuff like that. Um, I think another common tool, I believe it's common at least, is like Illumina iGenomes that they mentioned here as well. Um, if you sort of look at it from this figure, it looks like it's pretty bad, <laughs> um, but it's that's just, I think, the way that the figure depicts it. I looked into it a little bit. Um, it seems like it has a, a pretty decent amount of reference genomes and just reference files, more than RefGenie does, um, which you wouldn't be able to tell from the figure. But um, but it's supposedly hard. I haven't tried I haven't tried this specifically, but it's supposedly hard to um, request like individual files, like in an example, an example from before, like if you wanted just the high set index for um, a particular genome, it's like hard to just access just that. I think you have to download other things as well. Um, and then some of the other tools, they, as mentioned before, like aren't great with custom genomes or like files that aren't officially supported. Um, but yeah, that's sort of a comparison. Um, let me go back into this. Um, so I guess like takeaways for us, um, maybe admittedly this is like a little specific to me maybe, but uh, I guess some of us are um, developing pipelines. So ho hopefully there will be like some overlap with what I say, um, but at least for Speakeasy, like if we were to use Draft Genie to manage things, we would um, probably be able to support other organisms much more easily. So whatever Graph Genie has access to, which when I looked on their official server, it looked like they didn't actually have too many other organisms. I think Fruitfly was really the only one. And I, I don't think we would necessarily need that, but maybe it would be cool to have like that capability for Speakeasy on like, um, just for others, I guess. Um, but it would include other like more human, human genome builds than we have currently. That'd be one benefit. Um, another big benefit would be like simply being able to like download the pre-built assets like the high set index. Um, because currently sort of how it's done is we, we pull the FOSTA file and then we manually build the index. So for a lot of the genome combinations, we can just take out that building step and save time. Um, and then I think one of the biggest benefits, at least for Speakeasy, um, would be like taking out a lot of code. Because it, as, it, as it stands now, like we have a lot of hard coded paths to like FTP sites, um, getting particular genome builds. And then there's also specialized code needed to build whatever index, um, like the high set index. And um, we have Callisto index and Salmon index. So there's all sorts of code used to do that. And um, I think that would be, RefGenie would be able to simplify that like a quite a bit, um, potentially. Um, I guess one thing that's not mentioned here that wasn't really clear from the paper, I tried to look into it, but um, it wasn't clear like what versions of genomes were used. So like right now with Speakeasy, we support like 
you can specify like the GAN code build if you're using an annotation from GAN code. Um, and I'm not really sure what the equivalent would be with Graph Genie. It wasn't, I couldn't find that anywhere in the paper. Um, Cause it, maybe it appeared like it was using maybe the latest build from um, whatever source it was from. Um, so like HE38 was from NCBI and I guess, I'm guessing it's the latest, but um, anyways, that's, that's sort of another detail to think about, but um, something cool I thought would, I was like considering making, like what if we made this into a module? So um, basically the idea would, would be that we would have like a central location for reference files. Since I know at least personally, um, I actually have like a list of, of literal paths um, to different versions of uh, simple, like just the human genome itself. I have like several paths for like different versions of the genome with different chromosome names and all sorts of stuff like that. And um, this could be an opportunity to simplify a lot of that and then sort of encourage consistency, at least at Gypsy um, when possible. And then another thing that they, they covered, and it's not in the slides here, um, is using like, I guess I talked about it a little bit, but the custom genome thing. So like a case, um, like a particular case that I'm working with is um, with the WGBS stuff I'm doing is we have a, um, a version of a genome where we added the Lambda um, genome, like for Lambda spike ends. Um, and that's like added as a chromosome. So that, that, that would be like a case where we are using a custom genome, but um, RefGenie also supports that. You just use like that. I think it's called RefGenie add. Um, and yeah, I thought I would maybe go into the actual code just to show a bit of what it looks like. Um, as like a next step that we could do. So um, I got it set up here, just like in this folder. Um, and like initialized things. Um, and I, I imagine I would manage that. So if we made a module, I would like take care of this stuff, but like I had to add, um, add something to my path and then like set a configuration variable. But anyways, uh, <laughs> I think the part that you guys would be interested in is just like what it might look like. So if we, one of the commands is like showing um, what files are available on the default server. So that's rift you need list R. Um, so we get like this list of sort of what, what they call like an alias. So the name of the genome. Um, again, most of it seems like it's, it's like human. Um, of course we have mouse too and rat, uh, I think this is fruit fly, I believe. Um, and it's actually not too much more than we already have with like speakeasy, but there are quite a bit of files like, um, so for common tools, like common aligners, high sat star, Bismarck, stuff like that. Um, and so if I wanted to like, um, I'll think of one I haven't downloaded already. But if I just wanted to get like the, I don't know, the star index for rat, you would just do like ref any um, pull rn6 slash, uh, did I say star? I think I said star index. Um, it's, oh, I have not seen this. Um, I think I would have to set my file size. Okay, <laughs> that's like an issue for later probably. Um, but yeah, it's pretty simple. And then you can see what you have um, what I've already done, like things that I've already installed just from testing. Um, okay, or it just gets a random error when I'm trying to present. Um, <laughs> um, wow, what just happened there? Virginia. Okay, this worked last time I tried it, but it's supposed to be super simple where it just gives like a nice table. You need to load the Python module maybe? Um, I should have. Um, I've been doing it without the Python module actually, but let me make sure I don't have anything. That's a guy. We can try that out just to see what happens. Because I think as of now, um, 
Python 3 is like the default. Mm. Um, so it should be, a, although it looks like it's calling 3.8. Let me load the 3.8 module. <laughs> um, the Python, uh, actually, let me check which the name is. Forget, I think we may have 3.8.3 or something. Yeah, that's what it is. Um, sorry about this. Uh, it worked when I tried it last time. <laughs> Um, okay, that's crazy. Um, <laughs> okay, well, um, Python, Python. yeah, that, those were, I think, the commands I was going to show. Um, let me see if I miss anything important from the paper, like um, other commands that they sort of highlighted. Uh, well, I, like part of it, they talked about like you can you can host your own server pretty easily. Although I don't know if we would ever need to do that. Um, um, RFG seek. We went over list our poll seek. Um, I briefly covered build. Um, but. Yeah, this was what I was talking about. This is what I was mentioning about like you have to like set an environment. Well, you actually don't have to, but I think it's simpler if you do set an environment variable. But configuration is actually not too bad. Um, do you know what happens with um, let's say you're doing Revgini uh, pool AG38 high set to index? Um, you know what version of high set is actually downloading because there's multiple versions of high set and the index from one version might not be compatible with the index of the next version of high set type of thing. Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Um, there's a lot of high set two versions, right? So there's high set 2.04, 0.05, you know, 2.1, et cetera. Yeah, no, that's a good question. Um, so they sort of leave that up to the user. So you have to like, whatever version of high set that you make available. So like in practice, when I did, um, where was it? So it depends uh, on the version of high set that you have on your path then. Yeah, exactly. So like when I did this command, it's kind of small here, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, I loaded like the high set 2.2.1 module. Um, but I believe that if you if you were to, to um, try to make, like, actually, you, that's a good question. Can you tell Refugini that this is the high set two index, but with version 2.1 something? like? Like name it in some way. Yeah, they they, um, I wasn't quite sure on the details of how to do that, but they I know that they have support for that. They called it like tagging. Um, where what they did talk about that somewhere in here. Ta here it is tagging assets. Um, so, oh, so this is the syntax. So you would do like H thirty eight high set index colon, and then you could name it after the version if you wanted. Um, so, because I know that RefGenie sort of manages, like, it checks if you're using, if you have the, like, try to reference a um, asset by the same name, but really it's like a different version. Mm -hmm. It somehow checks that. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, we would probably, in practice, we'd probably use tags to, like, make sure we know what high set version is being involved or, you know, the software versions. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. Cool. Nice. So, so yeah, I guess here we can also use the tag for the Genco version. If we did anything with Genco's. Oh yeah. Yeah. That'd be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know how we would. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there'd be some stuff to work out, but I think it's possible at least with Refugee. Yeah. I think it's worth playing around more with this tool, and then maybe we can propose it to Gypsy um, admins or just mm -hmm. do it as a lever thing. Um, um, it looks quite interesting. And um, I don't know what your thoughts are about comparing this versus uh, like TXI meta, for example. Oh yeah, I, I briefly looked at that, but I would have to mm -hmm. probably look at that more before I would. <laughs> um, I think, I feel like they mentioned it in this paper as well. I know it you did, personally sent it. it but like, I don't know if, they just mentioned it, but like in a list of things of like. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. Um, 
they mostly focus on their comparison against IG nodes, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I would have to look a bit more into that before I'm mm -hmm. sure. If, um, yeah. yeah. It's nice that there are tools now for being organized type of thing. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, cool, I think that's everything. Um,